Giving the perfect thank you gift to your end is about a lot more than just choosing a nice item. It's about showing your partners that you value their partnership. Let's break down the three steps that make all the difference. Step number one, determine who should receive a gift. First, let's talk about who should receive a gift. During year end, it's important to acknowledge as many supporters as possible, and most of them will probably receive some kind of card or letter, usually in late November or early December. But when it comes to gifts, focus on your critical few, the top 20% of your donors who contribute around 80% of your revenue. Depending on the size of your nonprofit, that might mean you're looking at 50 to 100 people or up to 250 if your organization is larger. Generally, these are the donors or partners who give a thousand or more annually, making the time and cost of sending them a gift worthwhile. These individuals are not only among your most generous supporters, they're also deeply committed to your mission and vision. They're often motivated to contribute not just financially, but also with their time, their influence, and their expertise. Taking a little extra time to acknowledge their role in your organization's success, especially with a personal gift, strengthens the board and keeps your organization top of mind as they consider their year-end giving plans. Now, let's dive in to selecting the right kind of gift. Deciding on what to send can be a bit trickier than it seems. You want the gift to feel meaningful without being excessive and ideally, it's something that feels tied to your organization's purpose. Some donors may be sensitive to the idea of gifts purchased with donated funds. One way around this is to use a gift that's sponsored by another supporter, if possible, or to keep the cost low. Make sure the gift aligns with the donor's level of giving. For instance, if someone's giving between 1000 and 9999 consider a gift valued at $15 to $30. For those giving $10,000 or more, aim for something closer to $30 to $50. And for top donors giving $25,000 or more, consider a high-value gift that reflects the significance of their contribution. One key factor in choosing a gift is the perceived value. A gift doesn't need to be costly to be meaningful. In fact, some in inexpensive gifts are incredibly thoughtful and leave a huge impact. I've seen nonprofits use creative ideas that tie directly back to their work. For example, the Jesus Film, which is a documentary on the life of Jesus and has been extremely effective from an evangelistic standpoint, started taking pieces of their old worn out 16 millimeter films, encasing them in small blocks of lucite and giving these to their donors who had sponsored the production of the film. The cost was minimal, but the meaning was powerful. It was a token of the work their donations had made possible. And of course, the Jesus film has been spread to billions of people throughout the world. For years, my wife and I worked in Washington, D.C., and we had a tradition of sending White House Historical Society Christmas ornaments to our top donors each December. After more than 25 years, many people still tell us that they hang up every single ornament we've sent and they think of us whenever they see those ornaments during the holidays. It's hard to ask for better brand visibility during your end than being part of someone's holiday and Christmas tradition. Here are a few other creative ideas I've come across. Thanksgiving cards with ornaments. Lori, a colleague of mine, sends Thanksgiving cards from current catalog. She includes a flat ornament in the card, which makes it extra special. 
Troy sends inspirational books. He sent Paul Tripp's New Morning Mercies devotional book to his top 40 donors. Years later, supporters still mention how much that gift meant to them. Another colleague, Sean, sends seasonal plants, and his team bought potted mums from a local market and left them on donors' porches with thank you cards. This was both low cost and low effort, and it made a great impact. Another colleague, Cecilia, whose efforts operate in Hawaii, sends out a local calendar each year. It's something simple, but reminds donors of the organization's connection to the local community there in Hawaii. And remember, this community often loves hearing new ideas, so if you have a unique gift idea, share in the comments section to inspire others. Our final step is getting the gift to the donor. You can have a few options here. You can mail the gift, set up a meeting to deliver it in person, or as Sean mentioned, even drop it off on the porch if that feels right to you. When the gift is hand-delivered, you have a chance to meet face-to-face, -face, even for only a brief moment. Often, this creates an opportunity to deepen the connection between you and the donor. When you meet, share a story or two about the impact of their support and be prepared to talk about both the outputs and the outcomes of your giving. For instance, the outputs might be numbers like 500 children provided with meals, but the outcomes could be the personal story of a single child whose health was completely transformed because of their giving. Use real names or at least first names and photos if it's appropriate and doesn't compromise anyone's privacy or safety. A personal story of impact is often the most powerful gift that you can give. That said, mailing the gift is perfectly fine as well. Year-end can be a busy time for your donors, and they may prefer to receive something in the mail rather than be asked to set up an appointment at a busy time. But if you have a chance to hand deliver it, even if you end up leaving it with a receptionist, it's worth the effort to try. Taking the time to thank your donors during the year, especially year end, is essential. Thanking them right after a gift, again at Thanksgiving, Christmas, or even Valentine's Day, makes a huge difference in maintaining strong relationships. I've got other videos in our library about giving gifts at other times of the year. Check those out. But there's something unique about a year-end gift that reinforces the partnership in a way nothing else can. I recently heard a statistic that about 75% of nonprofits don't th send thank you notes after a gift. That was heartbreaking to me. I can't believe that anyone would miss an opportunity to thank people. Your partners may not demand recognition, but most genuinely appreciate it, and a small act of gratitude can go a long way in reminding them why they give. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if you've got some gifts that you think others need to be hearing about or if there's topics you'd like me to address. And let this community of life changers know that you're part of making a difference in our world. If you wish to watch future videos on this channel, just hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the release of the next video. If you wish to follow me on X, go to at Jim W. Dempsey. On Instagram, also go to at Jim W. Dempsey. Or if you have questions, go to fundraisingmasterminds.net forward slash Jim and Java. If you wish to be part of a community of like-minded leaders, 
join our Life Changes group on Facebook. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded. See you in the next video.